Good morning. Oh, we got to try that again. Good morning. Now I know I'm not alone. Um, welcome to Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. We're really glad that you're able to join with us for worship this morning, wherever it is that you happen to be located, or whether you're joining us at some point over the coming days and weeks. We're really glad to have you as part of the on-site or the digital uh, Trinity family. As we begin, we're going to uh, acknowledge why it is and where it is we come together. So I invite you to join with me in the bold type. Welcome in the name of the Christ. Ancestral and unceded lands of the Kletli Tidne people. Welcome to this place of blessing, this space of grace, and this holy sanctuary. We gather this morning to share in song, word, prayer. Receive God's deepest blessing that we might in turn. a little bit of time talking about our life and ministry, otherwise known as our announcements. So if uh, you have an announcement that you'd like to make this morning, I'm going to invite you to go over to the lectern uh, and do so in a friendly and orderly way. And I'm going to go swap out batteries and my microphone. Okay, I'll keep it down to three. First of all, uh, if you have made up a bag for seniors, we would like to get those in as soon as possible. Um, we've been accumulating them on the table in the narthex. Uh, all the bags went out, so now all we need is for all the bags to come back, and then we'll have the right number of bags for seniors. Uh, next week is our annual cookie sale. Great fun, good cookies. I made four types of cookies yesterday. So I'm bringing about 10 dozen cookies with me next Saturday morning at 9.30 in the morning where we're going to accumulate them all in the kitchen and then we fellowship ladies are going to put them together in dozens and then after church next Sunday you can just come into the fellowship hall. We'll have them set out already by dozens and wrapped up and you can just choose a dozen or two, or five, whatever you're called to do, and donate to us whatever you feel called to give. That's it. And just a quick update on my friend Laura, who I firmly believe now has a place to move into sometime before Christmas. Yeah, it's been an up and down week. She had a place, she didn't have a place, she had a place again. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a challenge. But um, the last I've heard, she still has a place. They're just waiting for the sprinklers to be fixed and then she'll be able to start moving her things in. She should be settled before Christmas, which is what has been my prayer for the last month and a half, that she would be settled before Christmas. Um, so hopefully next week, I will have a list of things that um, she really needs to acquire and if anyone has any of them that they can share, that would be great. I think I've got her a Christmas tree. Um, that's it. Thanks, guys. You guys have really made a very trying time in my life a lot easier with your caring and support. Thanks so much. Thanks, Judy. I'm also Judy. Uh, Judy from Outreach. And I want to thank you for your donation of completed shoe boxes. Our count as of about five minutes ago is up around 45, which is just awesome. Thank you for your donation of, of money through your offering or through e-transfer 
or straight to the office because this coming Saturday we will be making up more shoe boxes and um, and your money will go towards that. If you find that you have extra items, this box is in the office and what we're looking for are the little things. Like if you needed two combs and you got a package of 12, well, you could put them away till next year, but you might forget where you put them. So bring them to us before Wednesday at noon, and then I'll include them in the count, and that will be fewer that Vicki uh, needs to buy when she goes shopping. Could you hold this? The other item, or the other thing I, I would want to mention is we will be collecting gloves and mitts new or gently used throughout the winter months. Can you imagine how cold it was the last few nights? And thankfully the fire pit was open as a warming shelter, but even as I got out of the car to unload my groceries yesterday and didn't bother to put on my mitts, I was cold. So any new, gently used adult children We'll take them. This basket will live out by the door, and, uh, and we'll see that people who don't have anything on their hands get something. There's some extra shoe boxes by the Christmas tree if you're, if you're still wanting to do one, and there are lots more uh, near the washrooms. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Just um, a quick thing on anyone that is interested in getting together to make cookies ready for the cookie sale. I have put a sign up sheet at each of the doors and a little thing with directions on how to get to my house and when it is. So if you are interested in that, come uh, make cookies, um, visit. Uh, come and just visit, uh, whatever. Anyway, and my phone number is also on there, so if you've got any questions, uh, just give me a phone call. And uh, hope to see at about 12 or 20 people there. So, yeah. 12 or 20. Somewhere in there. Okay. I've got a, a couple of other announcements that I just want to draw your attention to uh, this morning. We've got graphics to go along with them. So the first one is our, our blue Christmas service. For those of you that don't know what a blue Christmas service is, it's really a, a, just a chance to come together as a community and acknowledge that in the midst of all of this you know, happy and, and bright and smile kind of from ear to ear that you're supposed to have, that the reality of life is such that for many of us, Christmas has all kinds of emotions associated with it, especially linked to loss. And so it's a, an opportunity to gather together and acknowledge the weight that comes along with Christmas, but to also acknowledge the hope that is there alongside it. So that's on the 21st, which isn't arbitrary. The 21st is the longest day of the, uh, longest day of darkness of the year, or the longest night of the year. So we quite intentionally come together on that day uh, for our blue Christmas service at 7 p.m. here. It'll also be broadcast, of course, on our live streaming platforms. Uh, the Christmas Cantata is next week. The choir has been diligently practicing. It's at a regular time, um, but it is also the perfect service to invite someone to come in and experience a lot of music that all based around Christmas. Uh, that's our choir cantata. They've been practicing for a couple months, so it should be a lot of fun. And then Christmas Eve, of course, is coming up, uh, for those of you that didn't realize that. Uh, we do three services on Christmas Eve. So Kids, Carols, and Chaos uh, is a shorter kind of 30-ish 30 30 minute experience at 4 p.m. Uh, and we'll have different stations here in the sanctuary uh, with stuff for younger kids uh, to do. And then our family service is at 6, and our communion service is at 9. 
If you haven't noticed, for the last while, our, our offering plates are located at both entrances. Uh, if you didn't put your offering in them on your way in, then when we get to our first hymn, feel free to go and find them and put them in there. Or after worship, they'll be up here. Feel free to come and put your offering in at that point. We're just still trying to get away from handling and handing stuff back and forth uh, as we move through the winter season. And our Advent mini retreat is coming up uh, this Saturday. So it's, a, again, a kind of opportunity to just spend some self-directed time uh, here at the church between 9 and 12 noon. There's no order to it. There's four stations. You start wherever you want. You do as many as you want or as many as you don't want. And then you go back about your day. But it's an opportunity to get together and say, in the midst of all of the preparation that's on the go and all of the the pressures and the tensions to just take a moment and hit the pause button and spend some time in reflection. Uh, after that, coming up as well as our queer worship, our queer Christmas service, that will be on December the 18th at 2 p.m. Um, I once again, all are welcome. And the great tool sale. If you haven't noticed, I haven't seen this on our website or on our social, there have been a whole bunch of brand new tools uh, donated. They're still in their original box that have never been used, even by me. Um, and uh, you can contact uh, Jack and, and say, well, I know, you know this is the price, and I, I would like to pay a little more. Um, so you can do that um, as a donation to the church. It's one of the ways that we're raising some additional funds uh, as we end into the home stretch of 2022. Oh yeah, there's there's cookies on on the the you know cookie drop off and set up on the 10th, cookie sale on the 11th. I got to get all the dates right. December has a lot of stuff going on. Here's uh, other ways that you can give and ways to give that many of you have already discovered. Uh, one way is to donate uh, through our website at trinitypg.ca. You can drop off envelopes, you can do e-transfers, or you could also join PAR, which stands for Pre-Authorized Remittance. That's a fancy way of saying, you tell us how much you'd like to support us month by month, and then the bank sets that up as an automatic uh, withdrawal and transfer uh, to us. So those are four ways that you can help to continue to support our ministry, especially as we kind of wrap up 2022 and want to end that well and start 2023 uh, with the bang. Those are all the announcements that I've got. We're going to shift gears here a little and now enter into worship. So I'll turn things over to Betty. Good morning. Our call to wor worship today is responsive. Could you join me in the bold print? <clears throat> the spirit of peace rests in this place on our hearts. With humble hearts and trembling souls, we pray that the one who judges with equity will find us here. We long for the day when worrying enemies lay down weapons. We long for the day when violent nature itself will cry, peace, peace. But for now, we call upon Emmanuel, soon to be delivered. We call, we call his, his name, name in our prayers, prayers our, our songs, and, and our longings. May, may the voice of this congregation be part of the song of the earth, filled, filled with, with the glory of God, God confident in, in the peace of, of Christ. Christ. We're going to take a moment and reflect, along with Reverend Greg, around making room for peace. Peace can be elusive. Whether we're talking about peace within our own hearts and minds or peace on a global scale, we have to make room for it. And making room for peace means asking chaos to take a hike. We can get so mired in chaos and complexity that we lose the big picture, whether we're talking about nation states developing narratives about settling the scores of the past or whether we're talking about day-to-day -day lives of taking care of the kids, finding meaning and success in the workplace, or living up to the kind of legacy we wish to leave behind. There's no shortage of chaos.
Mindfulness techniques can help a bit. Decluttering can help to a degree. But the key, I believe, is to know your life's purpose and to always, always focus on that. When we know our purpose, seeing through the chaos gets easier. When we strive toward that purpose and focus primarily on it, the chaos melts away. We make room for peace by freeing ourselves from the chaos. We're going to join together in singing our first piece for this morning. It's from Voices United number two, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And I'll invite you to stand in body or in spirit. Sing along with it. Please join me in the gathering prayer. God of peace, eternal presence, we have gathered to give you thanks and praise and ask for your continued blessing on our lives. We await the arrival of Jesus in the same way we await the arrival of universal peace with full striving and participation. Remind us of this time of worship that your kingdom is already here and yet remains unfulfilled, that the manger is ready to receive the Christ child. Open us to receive that which we need. Transform us so we can faithfully assess peace and so that all might know the full extension of our love. Amen. As Nancy and Julian come forward, we're going to join together in our candles of Advent. The choir is going to sing our piece the first time, and then after we've lit the candles, we're all going to join with the choir in singing it a second time. Truth that 
long time ago, the prophet spoke to us of a shiny new world where despair becomes hope, violence becomes peace, sorrow becomes joy, and hatred becomes love. A place where another way becomes possible. The prophet spoke about a promise made by our God, a promise of light that would pierce the darkness. We light the first candle for hope. Angels appeared bringing the message that echoed the voices of the prophet, whispers of new life in extraordinary places. The angels spoke words of invitation to join the creative work of God. Their presence and power came also with words of assurance. Don't be afraid. We light the second candle for peace. We wait once again for the advent of this good news. We watch once again for the one who will come, the one who is love itself in skin, bone, and breath. The moment draws very near now. Let this flame ignite our hearts with the possibility of all that God has dreamed for us. Amen. Affirming God's love. In God's reality, nothing is ever really lost. It might seem like it for a bit. It might feel like it for a bit. Yet in God, even the lost icons of Advent are just waiting to be found. In this season, may each of us be reminded that the Holy One has hidden our lives in the icons of hope, peace, love, and joy. Each of us is a living expression of these icons, reminders that we are loved and valued by God. As we journey through Advent, may we discover anew the depths of hope, peace, peace love, love, and, and joy, joy that, that shapes the molds of our, our lives. Friends, we're going to spend a little bit of time greeting one another with the peace of Christ on this second Sunday of Advent. Online, we invite you to use the chat boxes uh, to do that back and forth with one another here on site. We invite you to move around as you feel comfortable and still remember that not everyone wants a hug. Some folks don't want to move around and they just want to kind of bump fists or elbows or just kind of shake hands. Together, let's figure out what that balance looks like. Let's use the words, the peace of Christ be with you and respond and also with you. Friends, Let's greet one another with the peace of Christ.
We're going to join together in singing our next hymn for this morning. It's from number four. It's one of the theme hymns we're using throughout the whole season of Advent. It's God of all places. So if you went back to your seats and sat down, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're comfortable and able. We continue the season of Advent, recognizing that our lives are often very cluttered. They're filled with expectations, wants, desires, pressures on our time, talent, and resources. Sometimes the icons, the symbols of our faith, get lost and end up in the trash heap of life's refuse. This Advent, we will spend time searching for those lost icons of our faith and discerning how they can how we can have a more normal central role in our life, moving off the garbage pile and onto the mantle. We continue with Advent too, and pondering the role of peace in our lives and how, amidst everything else that is happening around us, to us, and with us, we can listen for peace. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and his faithfulness a sash around his waist. The wolf, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw with the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will never harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the roots of Jesse, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, and the nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. This is part of the Christian story. Thanks be to God.
invite us to join together in prayer. Let's pray. Be near us, Holy One, as we ponder these ancient words handed down to us throughout the generations. Help us to find around them and within them space for our own experiences as we join the threads of our lives to yours. Help us rediscover the icon of peace and what happens in our lives when we move it from the edges to the center. Bless, O God, the words of my mouth, the hearts and minds and souls of those that hear them and help turn them into action. Amen. It's a fairly familiar piece of Scripture. This notion that that from the stump of Jesse's tree, a branch will emerge and it will bring new life to the people, a different way of being to the people. If you've never seen something like that in real life, here's kind of an image of what that can look like. When the stump is cut off, the roots don't disappear. The roots run deep and they stay. And eventually, to borrow a phrase from a different kind of film, nature finds a way. And the stump... The stump that looked to be dead, the the stump that looked like, you know, you could just leave it alone and nothing was going on there, all of a sudden, something 
can come out of it. Something can grow up within it. And it's not the same tree because that one is gone, but it's something familiar and similar and yet different all at the same time. And that's kind of what I think Advent is really all about, especially as we hit the second Sunday of Advent, this, this Sunday for peace. That sometimes the things that used to exist need to be cut clear. The prejudices, the challenges, the phobias, the biases, all of the things that seek to delineate us and segregate us one from the other, to push us into different kinds of camps, the ins and the outs, the rights and the wrongs, the progressives and the fundamentalists, the liberals and the conservatives. Those things aren't really helpful. They're helpful in the sense of trying to understand who might be similar to you, but when the quest becomes less around identifying similarities and more about defining certainties, then those pieces become unhelpful for folks who seek to walk in the way of the Christ. Instead, it's making room for something new, Something different. Something that turns a lot of our preconceptions on their heads. When we take time to, to listen for where peace can be in the world, and when we take time to look for what peace might look like in the world, that shoot begins to grow. And the more we do it, the more we practice it, the more we, we engage in peacemaking and peace building, the stronger that tree becomes, the more vibrant it becomes. And that's not to say that it will always be easy, or that we won't meet any challenges, or that folks won't tell us we're nuts, that we've got it all wrong, and that those things could never happen. And yet, and yet the way of the Christ in the world is literally to say, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. And yeah, that's going to be hard sometimes. Any, any forester will tell you, and I'm definitely not a forester, but I know enough about trees to say that the rings are not always the same. When you look at that stump, Sometimes there's a big growth cycle in the tree, and sometimes there's a little tiny growth cycle, and sometimes the cycle is so small, it's like, I'm not sure the tree grew at all that year. That's life. But here's the reality of that as well. No matter how close those rings got, no matter if they looked like they literally touched, growth still happened. That's us. That's the second Sunday of Advent. That's looking for peace and being intentional about saying, when the world tells me it really ought to be pushed to the edges, pushed to the margins, maybe even put out on the curb with the rest of the, the trash from last week, that we are going to make the bold decision to try and put peace at the center of what we do. To use it as the lens through which we view the world and the way we engage it. Not looking for what is different between us as people or, or as different between us as humans and the rest of our eco-siblings, but rather looking for where peace can be created. In our scripture, there's a whole bunch of, of this and that kind of pieces that go back and forth. These, these kind of twisty, turny, let's flip the world on its head kind of thing. And, and what we end up with is, you know, the wolf with the lamb and the leopard with the goat and the calf with the lion and a child leading people and a cow eating with the bear and their offspring kind of enjoying one another's company and just having a grand old time. And the lion and the ox are eating straw together and an infant is playing around a cobra and a child is sticking its hand in a viper's nest and no harm to any of them. I invite you this morning to think about in your life where those pieces might be at play. Who's the, who's the cow in your life and who's the bear? Where is it you need to risk sticking your hand? 
Who's the lion and who's the goat that needs to figure out a way to get along? And what might you need to do to either make that happen or at least facilitate it happening? What might you need to let go of in order to make space for peace? Because here's the thing. What I've realized in my own life is, is when I fill up all the space and all of the air room with my own kind of notions and my own ideas and my own just-so-right convictions, sometimes there is no room for peace. I haven't allowed there to be room for peace. And it's only when I do that hard work for myself of, of taking some of that stuff out, the stuff that really actually needs to go to the curb, can I create room for peace to emerge. For that little shoot to come up in the space that I've created. And if that was enough, if that was the end of, of what I think we're called to do as, as we contemplate where we are going and the person whose birth we want to celebrate and what that means for us as disciples. If that's all we had to do, then I think the world would be a very different place. And as Greg said, we wouldn't have tyrants trying to rectify historic whatevers they think. And we wouldn't need to defend borders. And we wouldn't need to have passports. And we wouldn't have a conversation about the toxic drug crisis in our city. We wouldn't be talking about needing to collect gloves for people. We wouldn't be wrestling with how do we make sure that the underhoused and the unhoused have a place to live that's safe and secure and comfortable, that treats them with dignity and respect. If it was that easy, we wouldn't be having these conversations because the reality of it is that if we don't nurture that space and hold that space, it will very quickly get crowded out. And the pressures of life come swelling in. And the space we'd created all of a sudden becomes cluttered again. And the chaos becomes overwhelming and distracting. And that's what we focus on. So may we instead create the space, hold the space, and then do one of the hardest things I think we can do in life. Nurture the space so that together we might be able to find peace, not just for ourselves, and not just for our family and our friends, but for the folks we don't know. The folks whose story and our story have never crossed paths. So that together, we can put the icon of peace back at the center of life. Amen. We're going to join together in singing our next piece. It's called Don't Be Afraid. One of the challenges of creating space is that it can be incredibly scary. But we're going to sing this one, and we're going to sing it uh, three times. It's Don't Be Afraid for More Voices, number 90. And I'll invite you to stand in body or in spirit.
Please be seated. And as we transition into some intentional prayer time, I invite you to think of the, the people, the places, and the events that you would like to hold in prayer within this sacred community this morning. The places where you would pray for peace. The folks that represent those various animals and situations from Scripture. And I invite you to remember Neil D., Brian, Pearl and Kevin, Larry T., Gary G., Jim and Sylvia, the Reverend Dr. Rob Fennell and his spouse and his children, Laura B., Ursula F., Bruce C., Gordon, J.W., Jim B., Barb K., Angela, Martha, Jackie H., Reverend Gail, Mark L. Together, let us hold all of these names and places and events around the world in prayer as we join together in singing Kindle a Flame. Together, may we join our hearts and minds, our very spirits, together in prayer. God of all, you hear us as we give thanks and pray for your world and its people. Today, we give thanks for your gifts, for family and friends, for the joys of life and equal joy of celebrating them together and for your love, which makes these and all things possible, we give you thanks. God of peace, as we anticipate Mary and Joseph's journey of long ago, we pray for the people of today's Bethlehem, <clears throat> of Israel and Palestine, for refugees who have nowhere to lay their heads, for those who find themselves alone in strange lands. God of the morning star, protect all your people and guide us in the ways of mercy. Holy One, on this day, we remember Isaiah's words. How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring peace. And we pray for prisoners of conscience, especially women who are targeted and silenced. For those who, like John, proclaim truth in the face of oppression and who speak peace in the midst of violence. Soften the hearts of those in power, O God, and transform your world with your love. God who seeks relationships with and with us on this day, we pray, for those who will spend parts of all this season alone, for those whose tables will have an empty place this year, for those in care homes and hospitals, for our loved ones who live now in our eternal joy. God of heaven and earth, of fulfillment and promise, restore us, we pray. We place all these prayers in your care, O God, the ones we have named, the ones that have gone unsaid, and the ones that come from places we dare not tread, as we join together in singing words that have been handed down through the ages.
Friends, we give thanks for all of the ways in which people support our ministry here at Trinity United. It literally takes all of us to come together to give out over 60 hats to make sure that kids who do what kids do, they forget them, they lose them, they soak them, they take them. We'll make sure they have warm heads this winter. It takes all of us to come together, sharing our time, our talent, our treasure, our passion, our skills, and our resources to embody the kind of community that literally can and does change people's lives and the world. And so I invite you to join with me in prayer for the gifts that have been given, the ones offered today, and the ones that will come tomorrow. Let us pray together. God of all, bless us and the gifts we offer. Strengthen us for the work of building of your peaceable reign in our hearts, in our communities, and in your world. Amen. We're going to join uh, together in the liturgy for the sacrament of communion. If you're joining with us from home, now would be a good time for you to go and get whatever was going to serve as the elements for you. Something that represents the juice, and it very well might be the juice, but it might also be a cup of coffee or tea. And something that's going to represent for you the bread, which very well might be bread, but it might also be your morning bagel or toast or last night's leftover pizza. For in what we do together, the, the ordinary symbols become extraordinary and reminders of who and whose we are. On site, when we get to the point of sharing and communing together, we're going to invite you to come up the center aisle, receive both a, a little cup of juice and a rice cracker, and take those back to your seats via the side aisle. We're going to start at the back and work our way towards the front, but we let the choir go first. So they're going to come down around and come up, and then everyone else will follow them. Friends, let's join together in the sacrament of communion. All of the words that you're going to need are going to be uh, projected for you. I invite you to give your heart and your presence fully to this moment as the ancient words of sacrament are spoken. We begin prayer and response and then say it. The Holy One be with you. To the, the one who took, took on breath, we give thanks, thanks and praise. An angel came to Mary with a message and a promise and to Joseph with a dream and a call. Shepherds in the fields heard messages of, be not afraid, wisdom comes to us to witness, wise ones proclaiming God is with us. We welcome a divine presence. One who is willing to be born into the darkest places, calling us all to embrace a turning of this world, open our eyes visions of a new advent, open our eyes to the divine presence incarnated among us. At this table is where all are known as beloved. It begins again. Therefore, we join our voices with your people on earth and all the company of the heavens, singing praises to you. Yet even now, 
As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, we remember the life that this baby will live. We remember how he broke the bonds of human tradition to show all belong to the world God dreams of. Jesus sat at a table with plates and cups, conversations and jokes. Friendship and betrayal, a foretaste of the banquet of hope, peace, joy, and love, the kingdom come. And at the end of the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it. Then he passed it to all who paused to gather, saying, when you gather at the table, then at the end of the meal, Jesus took the wine, blessed it, and poured it all out, saying, this is a cup that is poured out in the new covenant. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died among, among us. Christ has died among us. Christ rises again among us. us. Holy One, bring your blessing upon this bread and this cup and all your people gathered here. By the power of your spirit, infuse these gifts and our hearts with your love, your life, and your light. By our prayers and through God's presence, this ordinary bread and this cup have been blessed. Behold what you are, both broken and whole. Become what you receive. O come, O come, Emmanuel, both this day and every day. Amen. So that which was whole becomes broken, so that in its brokenness, it can become whole once again. And in a similar way, that which was whole gets crushed. And in its crushed state, it becomes something else, so that it can become something more so that it can unite all people everywhere. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. In the United Church of Canada, we celebrate what's known as an open table, which means here there, there are no barriers. Here everyone is welcome. Each and every person who seeks to, to walk in the way of Jesus or come to know the Christ a little bit deeper is welcome at this table. It doesn't belong to the Trinity. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't even belong to the United Church of Canada. And so here, in the same way that Jesus welcomed everyone, everyone is welcome. Regardless of age or gender identity, expression or orientation, affluence, education, the language you learned at your grandmother's or father's knee, and all of the languages you've learned since, the places you've lived and moved from, or the place you've never left, your height, your size, your ability, none of that is a barrier here. For these are the gifts of God. For 
the people of God. And in a moment, all will be ready. So the gifts of God, or the people of God, come, for now we are ready.
so friends, let us share in the bread, for it is the body of Christ for each of us. Amen. And the cup, for it is the life of Christ for each of us. Amen. And friends, I invite you to join with us in the prayer after communion. The words will be there for us. God of pregnant expectations, God of Christmas promise, God of childlike wonder, we have eaten and drank of your table. May we come to know the wisdom of the deepest dark is where hope, peace, joy, and love goes to be reborn for a new life possible in our hearts and minds and in the beautiful and broken world. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to join together in singing Voices United, number 18. There's a voice in the wilderness calling, and then stay standing if, as you're comfortable and able for the commissioning, the blessing, and then the sung response. There's a voice in the wilderness calling. And I'll invite you to stand as you're comfortable and able. The God of love prepares the way for us and asks that by our living we may prepare the way for love's coming again. As we go from here, let our words and actions be the bridge on which fear and anger can retreat. Let us be living symbols and messengers of God's peace. So go and walk with God of hope. Go and be Trinity United Church right here, right now. And as we go, 
May we do so with the blessing of our co-creative God, the love of God shown to us in the person of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ. And with the love of God embodied in hope, a hope so big and so deep and so rich that we can risk putting peace at the center of our lives, trusting that we are forever held in the palms of loving and caring hands. Amen. Myself and Betty, the choir, the tech team, our board, thanks for joining with us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. Pay attention to the e-letters that go out and all the stuff that's coming over the next three to four weeks, including a very special Christmas Day service. But in order to have enough food for everybody, we're encouraging you to let us know if you plan on being here. We'll have more than enough, but we want to make sure we have at least enough, if that makes sense. And before we leave and go back out into the cold, I'll share with you this, this letter. Dear Trinity United, thank you for your gracious generosity in sharing your beautiful hall space and kitchen. Our event was a great success surrounded uh, by this cozy, welcoming atmosphere. This festive celebration was heartwarming. Blessings to you from grandmas to grandmas, Prince George. Friends, have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>